Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna check it out the new video uh, release for the Dragon Age um, Veil Vanguard. This video is focused more in the deep uh, progression system in the game, so we're gonna check it out how the progression system is gonna work uh, for the news game we're dropping soon. I'm Hilary Heidi, a producer at Bioware. Let's take a look at game progression in Dragon Age The Veil Guard. In this video, we'll cover skill Dragon progression. Age the beginning? item progression, okay. and companion progression. Okay. My goal is to build a rogue assassin who darts around my enemies and strikes them down with poison blades. In order to craft this build, I'll need to invest in the right skills, okay. find and upgrade gear, and ensure my companions complement my strategy. Let's start by looking at skill progression. As you complete missions, find codex entries, explore the world and kill enemies, Okay you'll level up your class. Each new level grants more health and unlocks skill points. The Constellation skill tree is where you spend points to unlock new skills. Each class has a unique skill tree and okay. can specialize in a specific form of combat. Specializations unlock at level 20. Rogues can specialize as saboteurs, bell rangers, or duelists. Okay. I'm going to build toward the duelist specialization which emphasizes agility and poisoning enemies with necrotic damage. There are four types of skills, traits, passives, abilities, and ultimates. Traits are activated by button combos. The riposte trait launches a powerful counterattack after a successful parry or defend. Okay. Passives are skills that are always active. The Death's Blessing passive gives you plus 10% necrotic damage. Abilities are actions you trigger during combat. With the Toxic Dash ability, you dash toward your target to land a deadly blow, dealing necrotic damage. This also applies the Sundered status, but we'll talk more about statuses when we get to Companions. And finally, Ultimates are high impact, large attacks that take longer to charge up but create devastating That's amounts of damage. Within the Duelist specialization, I have access to a unique ultimate ability called a Murder of Crows. I'll unlock this ability and then switch over to my character screen to equip my new ultimate. You can okay. swap out your abilities and ultimates anytime you're not in combat. Okay. You can also enhance your abilities with enchantments, but we'll get to that in part two. Okay. By leveling up, unlocking new skills, and choosing a specialization, you can start to design your ideal playstyle. But this is only the beginning. In part two, we'll talk about item progression. It looks fun. Your character, Rook, can equip up to nine items. Each class has their own main hand, offhand, and alternate weapon. Okay. For example, my rogue has a sword, a rapier, and a bow for ranged attacks. Okay. You also have a helmet, armor, a belt, an amulet, and two rings. You can acquire items in two ways. The first is by visiting vendors and faction stores. The higher you raise your reputation with each faction, the more items become available for purchase. The second way to acquire items is simply by finding them in the world. For example, while exploring the Necropolis halls, I discover a new main hand weapon, the Enchanted Longblade. Okay. Every item has stats and properties, as well as a rarity, ranging from uncommon to rare, to epic to legendary. This uncommon item has high physical damage and stagger stats along with a property that deals plus 20% final attack damage, okay. making the final blow in attack chains more powerful. Perfect for my melee focused assassin build. But what if I want to make it even better? At the heart of item progression is the caretaker's workshop. The caretaker is a mysterious entity that has set up shop in your home base, the lighthouse. I go where I am needed, Dweller. Now, I am here. Can't here you can stuff. upgrade item stats and enchant your items. The workshop has its own rank, 0 to 10. 
Okay. You can increase this rank by finding caretaker mementos out in the world or buying them at shops. The higher the rank, the better your upgrades. Okay. When you upgrade an item, you'll spend the required resources and that item will get a stat increase. At the same time, its level will increase by one until it matches your current caretaker's workshop rank. Mm, a higher rank okay. unlocks new enchantments. These can be applied to an item or ability, imbuing it with a unique property. For example, I can enchant my main hand weapon with plus 25% more stagger to quickly set up enemy takedowns. I'll also add an enchantment to one of my abilities, Toxic Dash, to increase its crit damage by 25%. Your companion's items can be upgraded and enchanted as well. More on that in part three. Okay. But the workshop rank affects more than just the items you bring to the shop. Anytime you find or buy a new item in the world, its level will match the current rank. So if your current rank is one, new items you find will be at level one. But if your current rank is five, new items will be at level five. And if you find or purchase a duplicate of an item you already own, two things happen. Prepare yourselves. First, the level of your existing item will jump up to match the caretaker's workshop rank, increasing okay. its stats. The item will also be empowered, unlocking a property and increasing its rarity. Buying a duplicate of my offhand weapon, the Duelist Blade, bumps up the blade stats, unlocks a property that applies necrosis to enemies I hit with repost, and changes its rarity from uncommon to rare. So it's a good That's idea to keep leveling up your caretaker's workshop, because the higher its rank, the better your items will be, whether you're upgrading them at the workshop or finding them out in the world. Okay, gotcha. Another item type you can find or buy are runes. Each rune provides a passive bonus to your build, as well as an active bonus you can trigger. Up to three runes can be slotted into Rook's Lyrium Dagger. I'll slot in this Scorch rune, which allows my otherwise necrotic focus build to deal out fire damage. But skills, items, and upgrades aren't the only elements of creating your build. Because in the Veil Guard, you're not fighting alone. Damn. In part three, we'll talk about companion progression. Companion progression, okay. Each companion has their own skill tree and unique items. They can be equipped with a main hand weapon, an offhand weapon or keepsake, armor, and a trinket. Some gear, such as this Corvid cloak on Lucanus, can enhance my character's build. In this case, applying bleeding or necrotic damage whenever I detonate an overwhelmed target. Okay. And at the Caretaker's Workshop, I can upgrade and enchant companion items just like Rook's gear. Let's upgrade Lucanus's Corvid Cloak to level 5, greatly increasing its bonus ability damage, and enchant it with plus 1 maximum stack of Necrosis. Companions also have their own skill trees, so as they level up, you can spend points to unlock skills that complement your own. Okay. Some abilities can serve as primers, applying status effects to enemies such as Sundered, Overwhelmed, or Weakened. Other abilities are detonators, combining with primers to create powerful detonations on status-afflicted targets. You can swap out companion abilities anytime you're not in combat. The hubs have like a lot of information. In some cases, you'll want to spec companions with abilities that can fill in for weak spots in your build. For example, if I know I'm going to face a horde of darkspawn, which are resistant to my rook's necrotic damage but weak against fire, I'll want to bring along a companion like Davrin, who has powerful fire abilities. I'll also bring Nev, who can detonate targets that I've primed. Okay. First, I'll use Davrin's Asan Strike ability to inflict fire damage and knock down his darkspawn. Next, I'll rush in with Toxic Dash to prime a target with the Sundered status. And finally, I'll use Nev's Icebreaker ability on the Sundered enemy to detonate it. In other Damn. situations, such as this battle against the undead, I want to max out my necrotic damage potential. I can accomplish that by bringing along Lucanus, a fellow rogue whose gear and abilities increase the amount of necrotic damage I can deal out. 
Our progression systems allow you to finely tune your skills, gear, and companions to create the perfect build. Okay. Got us in the distance. Damn. Okay, this was the progression um, system review for Dragon Age uh, Veilguard. The game looks really fun. I thought in my mind first, I thought the game the game would be like a multiplayer game. Maybe have that, I don't know. But the hubs look kind of confusing because they have a lot of information. The design looks beautiful. I love the design. They just have a lot of information at the same time on the screen, so you're going to have some time to get used to, to this new um, hub and system. But seems like pretty fun. Um, gonna have a lot to do, gonna have a lot to upgrade, to have folks in your bench to upgrade your, um, how do you say, it's not, it's not clan, what she said is, um, I forgot what she says, uh, for the bench, they, more you, more upgrade, the more upgraded weapons you're gonna be able to collect in the map and to upgrade when you be on home on your base, so that's very interesting, um, but yeah, they explain a lot on this. Um, I don't know if you're going to be having to multiplayer. I didn't check that out yet. I'm not that deep on Dragon Age. But I'll check it out if they have info about if you're going to have multiplayer or not. But so far, it looks pretty clean. I really like it. The combat system looks cool. Uh, but a lot of information. But once you get used to it in the system, and especially playing the controller, um, you do the swaps very fast. So that's pretty cool. So I, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, this uh, Dragon Age drops on the October 31st, so it will be a fun game, definitely going to be playing. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments if you like this uh, progression system, uh, what things you like, you don't like, or things that you expect to have in the game that maybe make it better or you enjoy more. As a gameplay wise, I, I don't think they explain much about the story. I know they have like a bunch of mixed videos for Dragon Age. You're gonna react to all of them. So, but so far, this one here I was more focusing on progression system. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see you.